In this video, I'm going to talk about solution word formats and solution word formatting. Now, if you're just making puzzles automatically, this is normally done automatically for you, so you don't need to worry about it. So this video is for people who want to design grids manually or do more advanced things where they take more control of the grid or do non-standard puzzles. So let's say here, I'm just editing a grid entirely by hand. So I enter a word like Asia along the top here. So in the clue editor, we've got Asia with a lowercase here, which is clearly not correct. So this kind of thing is very simple to correct. You can just right click in the review edit clues window on the solution word and change the case here. So here I can just select capitalize and we'll change it to Asia to get the formatting of the solution word correct. I can do a similar thing for uh, compounds. So if I, for example, have Oliver Twist in this slot here, again, you'll see the formatting is incorrect. So this isn't just a case of capitalization now. Now we want to have a space in the middle here. And that's where word formats come in. So to change the word format, you can either double click here in the review edit clues, or you can put the cursor on the word and use the clue editor. Either way, you will open up the clue editor. So here, at the moment, we've got no punctuation, no capitalization, and a word format here of 11. So this is just a number of letters in the word. Now, if we want to put a space uh, after the sixth letter, I could change this to 6,5, and then there will be a space in the answer word. So this is called the word format, and this sometimes will appear in cryptic puzzles after the length after each clue to give you the length of the solution and the formatting of it. Alternatively, if the word format was 11, I can also just directly edit the solution word here. So I can, for example, put the cursor in here and just press space and it'll automatically put the correct word format for you. So you all want to do this if you want to do any more fancy editing of the solution. I can also right click on here and choose capitalize now I'll capitalize it if I want to, and then I can manually put a capital T and get Oliver Twist to have it correctly formatted. You'll notice if I put something that doesn't match the length of the original word, so I wanted to make a specialty puzzle where the answer was Oliver's Twists or something, you can see the answer shows in red, and the red is just indicating the fact that you've now actually changed the number of letters as a warning or as the fact that it's a special solution. But normally, the words total number of letters will match the number of letters in the grid, and it's just a question of fixing up um, the format. So when you fill a puzzle from a word list that's provided, or your own correctly formatted word list, this is entirely automatic for you. You should end up with the correct format in here. Uh, for example, if I just fill this grid and accept, you should see now that we've got Adams here correctly formatted. We've got DDT in capital letters and all the table linen has a space in it. So everything has just been done automatically. So you need to do it unless there's something you want to change. So of course, some cases the word may have multiple format depending on where the hyphen is, or whether it's capitalized and editing the solution word is a way of disambiguating that. Now, some people prefer not to actually see the words correctly formatted here. If you prefer to have them all uppercase, there's an option to do that. You can go to Options, Clue Editing, and select this option here, Show Answer Words in Uppercase. If you do that, then the answer words will appear in uppercase. And that will also be the case if you want to print clues with answers or produce a PDF of them, for example, for submitting to a newspaper. But usually, to make for readability and to be as unambiguous as possible, it's usually better to have the words correctly formatted. So if I open something like a cryptic puzzle, these will all have the word format set correctly here because this is a completed puzzle. But you can see that the word formats do not appear after the clues here. And that's just for, for editing convenience. But when you print the puzzles, so if I go to File, Print, Export, Re 
and print preview, you'll see that after each clue, the solution format, the number of letters, or in the case of a compound, the format of the solution is given in after the clue in brackets. So whether or not that's included is an option. By default, that's on for cryptic and, clip and quick clues. Um, an American is off, but if you want to change it, you can go to options, uh, sorry, clue properties, and change the setting here, solution length after clue. So here it's selected to include them. I could check that off, or I could use the option only of compound, and that would only include the, the format if it's non-trivial. So something like round the clock would have the format to tell you about the spaces, but something like ashamed would not because it's just a straight word of length given by the word slot. Another case where you might want to change the format is where you're doing something uh, a bit more specialised. So I go back to this puzzle here, undo my fill. Let's say I had X word in here, but I now want to turn into a specialty puzzle or rebus where X is actually the word cross in one square. So if I do that and go to square properties, to open the square properties, I can change the display letters that appear in the square to be cross. So I will then have in the grid crossword. But you'll see that the solution word here hasn't changed, it's still x word. So that may be what you want depending on what exactly you're doing. But if you want the solution to be crossword, then of course you can go to the clue editor as before, and put the cursor on the word and edit the solution word. And you can see that it's shown in red, highlighting the fact that this is a special word in the grid. If you go to the word list manager, you'll see that the provided word lists should all be correctly formatted for you. So here, Aachen is correctly a capitalized letter and Aaron's rod has got the spacing and a hyphen and apostrophe where you'd expect to see it. So there are various features in the word list manager for converting the format or case of things and you can use the functions on the word list menu if necessary to try and change the formatting. So change format case, for example, um, down here. Theme words are, of course, normally formatted as soon as you type them in. So if you make a freeform vocabulary puzzle, the provided word lists are all correctly formatted already and of course you're entering your own custom words you can just type them in directly as you want them and then that will be propagated into the completed puzzle so you don't need to do anything else by hand. And I think that's about covers it for the basics of setting word formats and getting the solution formatting as you want it.